what can I say? I'm excited to be here and I have a great presentation for you. So let's do it. I think you will be surprised. Uh, I didn't even, uh, uh, Rob and Scott, I think you might be surprised by this as well. Um, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna share my screen and dive right in, hold on. All right, you can see my whole screen now. We'll, we'll go here. So this is officially the update of your sports nutrition program, Coast to Coast. This year, lovely logo there. You are entering 2019 in a little over a month. So let's start thinking 2019. And you can do some pretty good work on sports nutrition, I'm sure. Okay, we are always working on it. So 2019 is going to be a big year for you. I can feel it. You guys are going to be amazing. Second half of the season, going into the playoff run, uh, hitting stride, and executing. So let's use nutrition to our advantage. Okay, as coast to coast players, you have this special advantage. So I'm glad you're taking advantage of it. Um, so I want to tell you about Ryan, who is a coast to coaster. Um, so he's made the University College Hockey, which was one of his goals. And he worked with me in the summer on his sports nutrition. So he took the steps to advance things beyond what the basics were offered in, in Coast to Coast. And he has really excelled. So you're going to hear directly from Ryan what uh, he experienced. So going into this uh, program, he's talking about the sports nutrition program that you are now going to get to be walked through. He says, I already ate pretty healthy and I found that I was only making small tweaks to my diet and that's all it took to make a difference. So if you are already doing some amazing things, guess what a few little tweaks are gonna do? So let's hear it from Ryan. So I'm going to now play his video here. It was like to me, it was like I've always been kind of a smaller guy. So, like, everyone always tells me, Oh, like, you need to eat more protein. Like, that's just like kind of like what all everyone say. That's what the coaches would say. So, it was like, Oh, like, that's what I needed to do. And so, it was kind of hard for me because all the, all the people I knew, like, kind of in my circle, like my coaches, my teammates and stuff, they're like, Oh, like, you need to keep eating protein to like get bigger. Like, and protein like, shakes, even, or, or just like protein in general? Just protein in general. Just like eat, like, a big piece of chicken and then like maybe a little thing of vegetables and then like you'll get bigger. Mm -hmm. I'd say uh, I think my nutrition was a little bit off when I was 14, 15. I think when I was that age, I was thinking it was all proteins. Like, I need to eat a ton of protein. Like that's how I need to get bigger. And then now that I've gotten older, gone through this program, but I realized I could probably, well, I did. I took my protein count down started eating more carbs, started eating more vegetables, and that made a big difference. I started having a lot more energy. I started gaining a lot more weight, not because I wasn't eating enough protein. It's just I didn't have enough nutrients or, like, carbs to really, like, give me energy to do things and, like, to build on that muscle. I mean, I think the big thing is, like, this summer I gained about, like, five, seven pounds just from, like, eating more eating like smarter like I started eating a lot more carbs throughout the day and less proteins I started noticing I was a lot less hungry all the time I started eating a lot more vegetables maybe before I'd have like one vegetable a day and I ramped that up to about like three to four times a day mm -hmm. and I started noticing like that made a big difference and then it wasn't like an instantaneous thing it wasn't like oh sweet like in a week I gained a pound it was after like a while I started noticing like, all my weights were going up a lot mm -hmm. I was getting leaner I was getting bigger and like I could no, it's on the ice. I was getting a lot faster. Yeah, I think it is sustainable. It's definitely difficult. Like for us, like I'll walk you through my Wednesday. For example, we lift in the morning from 6.15 to 7.45, then I have class 8 to 11. We skate from 12 to 2, and then I have a lab from 2 to 5. So that day, that's like my busy day. Like I don't have time to do much, but I try to wake up I have like a little like applesauce pouch and then just some bread and some peanut butter to try to like get me a little bit of fuel going it, I struggle with like I can't eat a big meal right when I get up and then afterwards what I did the night before is I'd like pre-make like a smoothie or something and either have that right after uh, my lab or I'd have it 
right before or right after I skated just to try to give me a little bit of energy. And then I'd also like make a sandwich with some fruit and stuff and then bring that. So just depending on how I felt, I'd either have the smoothie first or the sandwich first. And then I'd come home and then usually on like Monday night or Sunday night, what I would do is I'd cook and just make enough meals for like three or four nights. And that really saves me a lot of time. So that way I can come home, spend five minutes just reheating my food and then I can eat it. And so that's a really busy day for me that just by thinking ahead, I could, okay, this is when I'm going to be busy. This is going to be my window of when I can eat. I need to two, three days before kind of plan that out. So that way when the day comes, I'm not starving all day because it'd be really easy just to fall into that. Just be like, oh, I don't have enough time rather than I just need to plan my time a little bit better. bad so my first year of juniors I actually lived on my own so I had to make all my meals so if you talked to me then I would have been like oh my god this is really hard like trying to figure out what I'm going to eat I definitely struggled a lot that year and I had a lot of growing pains but now I've been cooking for three years now I'm starting to get a lot better when I make my shopping list I think in my head okay what am I out of what am I gonna what am I gonna eat for like the next week or two what do I kind of want to have next week and then just as I make my list I make sure like I include that I think the f first thing you should master is learn how to cook a bunch of different things. Cause I kind of fell into the trap. I think that year I cooked the same three meals, like the entire year. And by the end I was kind of sick of those meals. So just when you're younger, maybe when like you're with your parents or something, just kind of learn how to cook some different stuff, kind of explore like your taste a bit, kind of learn like, okay, this is what I like to have for breakfast. This is what I like to have for lunch. And then this is what I like to have for dinner. And then, once you kind of get a handle of like what you like to make and what you don't like to make and what's easy, what doesn't take a lot of time that once I started learning that, that's when I started getting a lot more efficient of like, okay, tonight I'm not gonna have a lot of time to make what's something quick and easy I can make that I, that I can make or okay. I have maybe like two hours. Let's make a nice dinner tonight just cause I have the time to and just make it for the next couple of nights. Yeah, I think the biggest part was definitely like meal planning. And then just, I really liked, you're not going to be perfect. Like you're going to make mistakes. Like I'm like a big, okay, I just have like a meat, like maybe some carbs and then like a protein or like an energizer and then like a uh, vegetable or something. I'm a big, like, I don't really feel like making a complex recipe. Let's just throw it all together. Sometimes it tastes really good. Sometimes it doesn't, but like, Hey, like I made it, like it works. Like, it works for me. And I think that's really stood out for me. It's like, don't expect every meal to be absolutely amazing. Cause like, it's not. Okay. So hopefully I still have everyone here. <laughs> that was my uh, prelude to the presentation because I want you to see the possibility of evolution and how you could go from making these mistakes as a young athlete. And he talked about the protein mistake to evolving into what it is to eat for performance. That's my ET4P framework, which you're gonna to learn today. So I'm gonna share with you now the presentation and we can get into the details of what that is. Of course, if you have any questions, um, I'm gonna go over them and I think we'll save them mostly for the end. So number one, as we are getting into the middle of the season, you're going to have experienced some failures and that's okay. That's normal, especially when it comes to food. But are you critically assessing your failures or are you ignoring them? So I just talked today about a quote that I saw from Chris Letang about how he looks at a failure like him losing to the Ottawa Senators over the weekend and looking at what the team didn't do well and critically assessing what he's gonna do next. It seems so natural as a elite hockey player that we'll look at our game and assess it and do better next time. Um, are you doing the same with nutrition? So it's important to be looking at these failures, not ignoring them. So what is the story you're telling yourself about your nutrition failures or successes? And is there any story going on at all? So here are some failures you can and might identify with. 
I made a lot of these mistakes. And probably the last mistake is the most pivotal. So in this way, we'll get there, but I want you to know that you're not alone. As a surprise for showing up here, you are going to get the link to go get the answer on how to plan for and execute a high performance pregame meal. So I've done this activity with my hockey champions group in my, um, my membership club and they loved it. And so you should get that too. So you'll get it and I'll send you to there afterwards. So today you're going to learn the information part of this structure. It's not that complicated, but it is for elite athletes, uh, pros. This is the same stuff I teach to pros to my Olympians. So you're going to be using the top strategies, make no mistake. And uh, you'll get me, okay, I'm a sports dietitian and also a human. So just know that I've made many of these top mistakes as a uh, as a top elite athlete as well. I played uh, hockey for Cornell University and it was, you know, really like through making these mistakes that I have the passion to share with you this information. So I hope that you're on board with me, okay? If you have any social media going on on the side, maybe silence it now. I really want your full attention here because that's how you are going to learn. So it's like, if you need to go grab a glass of water, run and come back. Um, champion celebration if you need to stretch because let's go strong now. Pen and paper if you need it. Let's do this. Um, and of course, if you have the social media going on on the side, you're not gonna be able to fully process information. You cannot be two places in once. It is mentally impossible. So let's focus now. You're gonna get some good stuff here. All right, mistake number 10. I'm gonna go down from 10. The number one, the number 10, I say number one mistake I see hockey players make, it might as well be, but it's number 10 here, is protein powder overkill. We do not need to be guzzling protein powder every day. It's not necessarily and actually can hurt your performance. So here's a one, two for you to have on your mind. 40 grams of protein powder is too much, okay? For the majority of players, especially under the age of 16 years old who are not fully developed, you are probably capping out at 20 grams of protein in terms of what your body actually can use at a given time. Three times per day is too much to have a big chunk of protein powder. I've seen gut problems happen, bloating happen, um, and then of course other spin-off effects of not being able to manage body composition like you want to because you're consuming so much protein powder and paying so much attention to that. So do not make that mistake, okay? Some is okay, but more is not better. And then it goes hand in hand with the previous one, but avoiding all supplements. Now, some protein powder is okay, right? 20 grams after a hard training, this can be beneficial. 20 grams before bed, this can be beneficial, but not overdoing it. So there are other supplements too I want you to know about. So number nine, here's my short list for you. And just know this is scratching the surface of supplements. This is an advanced sports nutrition topic, which I teach after the basics program. So a confident athlete knows the basics of sports nutrition, which you're learning some of today, and then you use that, practice it, and then you move to the advanced. So here we have uh, branch chain amino acids and glutamine, and I could list more, so there's an open dot there, which are on the devil side, and the angel side <laughs> are vitamin D, creatine, gelatin, caffeine, sports drinks, nitrates. I listed more here to give you an idea of like, yes, there are some supplements that you could look at. Vitamin D for pretty much all winter athletes where you're indoors. So this is going to be a, a good one for you. Creatine when you're ready for it and your diet is optimized. Gelatin if you're in a period of injury, recovery, and repair, especially around tendons and ligaments. Caffeine, sports drinks, and nitrates are used as little performance boosts, tiny boosts, that when you have the base diet covered, then you, you know, that little extra boost can help you, but not as much as a base diet will help you. Uh, branch chain amino acids and glutamine to me are flat out waste of money right now. I would concentrate on having a better protein powder than using these amino acid supplements. 
Okay, number eight, showing up dehydrated to games and practices. This is such an easy fix, guys and girls. This is such an easy fix. You can actually simply drink more water. But we see in the research, here's the percentages. We saw a national team selections practice. You think you want to make the national team show up hydrated? Well, guess what? They measured those people, 55% of them. And this is for the under 18, like going to play in the juniors. Uh, this is 55% of them showing up to the selections practice dehydrated. And we can measure that with special tools looking at your urine. So there's no doubt about it. On OHL team practice, 75% showing up dehydrated. And then an OHL game, okay, look, they took the game more seriously than practice, right? So they're hydrating better for the game. But guess what? Most of what you're gonna learn to execute well in the game happens in practice. You know that. You're gonna take many more shots in practice. So what are you doing to your brain if your brain is not getting the proper hydration that it needs to fully execute that shot? You're, you're giving it a disadvantage. So something as simple as drinking more water and being more hydrated can give you an edge something really easy and a big mistake that hockey players are making. There's clear science to back that up. Number seven is using a body weight scale to track muscle gain. So this might seem a little weird, but let me explain. So when you wake up in the morning, you could try this tomorrow. You might be, let's say 180 pounds. Okay. That's like the hockey player's dream, right? Or at least for a guy. So you might be 180 and then the next, I don't know, like five hours later or towards the end of the day, you might be 190. Does that mean you're 109, like 10 pounds more of muscle weight? Absolutely not. So how are you tracking your muscle gains? The scale alone is not gonna help you there. You need other measurements like circumference of your arm or taking the, the waist measurement or a body fat measurement, but that gets into a little more tech tools and just having a body fat scale at home that you step on and your two feet touch the scale and they measure something is not going to be enough. So in that way, you do need some professional help when it comes to body composition and actually measuring muscle mass gains. And you're not going to see it on a scale day to day. So that's where I'm saying a mistake I see people make is, okay, I gained a pound or two pounds in a week. Well, you really do need to be tracking body composition. Um, in other ways than just the scale. Now, the number six mistake goes hand in hand. It's not using a body weight scale at all. So I do think there's a good use for that weight scale. Here's what it is. It is taking your AM body weights or even weight before and after a practice or a game and assessing how much your hydration has changed. If you're pretty much weight stable in one week, what the fluctuation is from day to day is going to be how hydrated you are. So guess what? You can assess a little bit for the previous problem or mistake that I see a hockey player is making. You can assess yourself if you're showing up hydrated by doing some simple body weights. So I say, take your body weight three to five days in a row, first thing in the morning after using the washroom and see how your body weight fluctuates and see how you're showing up hydrated first thing in the morning. And then you could also do a body weight before and after a game or a practice and see how much you sweat, how much body water you lost um, and how much you replaced it during the game. You don't have to replace body water you know, 100%, but it's good to have a nice replacement uh, going on so that you don't dehydrate too much. Number five is skipping a meal. Um, often I see, players skipping breakfast. What does that mean for you? It means there's a little robber guy stealing muscle. It means you're robbing energy from your muscles. You are literally ripping off your metabolism, you're ripping off your strength, you're ripping off your power, your explosion. So do not be skipping meals when possible. Number four, eating slow digesting foods right before hockey. Guys, I'm talking about these lovely things, protein bars. Protein is one of the slow digesting nutrients. I call it a muscle builder in my food list. So you actually need some time to digest protein. It sits in your stomach digesting a little long. So I wouldn't have them right before practice. So just knowing what your slow digesters are is going to help you. And I'm going to review them in a sec. Number three, eating meals too close to practice or games. It's a little bit the same as number two, but not quite. 
you want to be actually timing your meals, your pregame meals, your pre-practice meals really well. So now I'm going to get into a little bit about what that timing is. Okay. One of the things that I want you to know is that even though there's a lot of information out there on the internet from well-meaning trainers and coaches and whatnot, um, we are learning all the time and evolving the sports nutrition. So you do want to have a reliable source of information here that you can come back to. But some of the things don't change. Some of the information doesn't change. So when something is set and the research is clear, we're going to highlight that. And so the research is clear on protein metabolism, like how much protein powder you can eat, that number 10 mistake. So I want you to know that there are some things that are pretty set and some things that are um, not as well understood. And I will always tell you the difference because that is what a researcher scientist does. So let me give you the clear path to leading to this deeper place of knowing. And we're gonna start with the simple um, first steps, okay? So if you take the first steps to eating for performance, then you can run into that advanced step and really feel confident about it. You know, we'd say we're creating the confident athlete. So I want you to be super confident when you go down that advanced uh, avenue and you do explore things like supplements. So your first step to performance eating, guess what? It includes everyone, family, if you're not living with your family, roommates. So it's not you eating in a bubble, like let's include people in the process. And it will lead to your highest peak in performance. If you have not practiced performance eating uh, yet, you will experience a boost in energy. So that's exciting. All right, the main goal here is that you do experience an extraordinary performance, okay? We are going above, we are energizing you above. So you're gonna be doing that, but if you do not, and this is where the obstacles come in, if you do not, one, try something new. So if you aren't willing to try something new, you are not gonna get the benefits of evolving. You need to literally be your mind open to trying new things. So that could be a new vegetable. It could be a new structure, a new time to have your pregame meal, a new pregame meal. So be open to trying something new. And if you want a quick fix, this isn't going to work. You do not learn to play hockey in a day, right? So if you want it to work right away, you're going to put in a little bit of work and practice. Anything worthwhile takes work. So um, I make it simple in this way to step to go in these steps, but keep in mind that it does, it will take some practice. So you must be wondering what these first steps are. So let's go through. Now, one number one, it's learn what to eat. So I categorize the learning what to eat into three uh, mini categories called the energy category, the superior tools category, and the muscular reinforcements category. I put them in the food list, which you have access to. This is the up, uh, updated version. So it's, this is the 2019 version which you have um, access to as well. And so this is eat from this list for performance. And we have energizers, superfoods, and muscle builders. And this is how we build meals and snacks that you can clearly understand what the food is doing for you. So make sure you know that it's, it can be as simple as one, two, three. Okay, what I'm focusing you on is that we're eating foods for its powers, like not the fact that it has calcium, but we're eating spinach to build bone strength. Or we're not eating spinach because it has iron in it, but we wanna eat spinach because it's helping our oxygen flow better and our, or make our pads in our joints solid. So in that way, I'm moving away from needing to tell you or you needing to know about calories, carbs, uh, phosphocreatine, protein and all of the vitamins and minerals, you don't necessarily need to know that to understand what the power is in that food. So after 10 years and two master's level trainings in sports nutrition, that is what I have realized. This simple approach is the most effective that you can take for making change in your diet. So um, it was really my daughter, and I'll introduce myself in a second, but it's my daughter that uh, made me realize that this simple approach was better than anything I'd ever tried to do before that was like teaching people about carb counting and this. It's really, we need to start simple. I think you'll agree with me. So there are some other versions uh, of the food list. So we have um, young versions. If you have young kids in the household uh, or like a cousin or something that you're like, I want them to follow this advice as well. Like I said, it's a family affair. 
I have this uh, fun food versions, fun food guides called Eat One Up that are more visual. That's all. We can't fit all the foods on there, but they're just fun, more visual. Um, eat to level up a little bit, you know, maybe older, cooler looking version. So in that way, it's just a bit more visual to show you that these three categories, energizers, superfoods, and muscle builders are really what you need to know. Oh, and guess what? We're going to make a game of it. So this is coming, um, making a game and we should be making a game out of food, food, um, and especially performance food is, you know, to really have some fun with it. So it could be a game that we make in order to develop meals. So these are my uh, testers, my daughter and my son, and we are located in Montreal. Uh, so hockey hotbed here. I know some of you are kind of new to me because uh, you haven't seen maybe the first video. So I'll just quickly introduce myself, but my name is Pearl Nirenberg. I am a trained registered dietitian uh, with specialized uh, training in the area of sports nutrition and for sure hockey. My background is in high level hockey. Um, as I played for, I mentioned I played for Cornell University and I have a, a couple of master's degrees that are going alongside that. So a lot of sports nutrition information that I'm summing up for you here. So just know that I'm taking you on a journey where you're going to get to that deep, deep information I have to share with you um, and come along one step at a time on that. So this is the deep, deep information. Um, if you are a science person and you like to read science, I have made a, written a full literature review using the latest science that we know for the adolescent hockey player. So if you are interested in this, all you have to do is reach out to me and I can share that with you. It's about a 10 page PDF. So let's look at these energizers. You know, the energy, the number one fuel for hockey. We wanna be getting these in. What are they? They're fruit, all kinds of fruit, different versions of uh, you know, dried versus fresh. We have grains like oats and rice and pasta and quinoa, bread. Um, and you hear the carb vegetables like potatoes and corn. Those are the energizers, the number one fuel for hockey. All of these energizers are digested into sugar after you chew food, mash it and absorb it, it turns into sugar and that's what your muscles use to move you in sport, to take that snapshot, to hit that stride, um, you are going to be using the sugar fuel. So in this grid here, I actually give you an idea of how quickly the sugar is gonna get into your body. So even inside your digestive system, when you chew something, it's not right away inside your body. It's still sitting in the middle of your body until it absorbs into your bloodstream and then into your muscles. So the oats and the rice and the sweet potato and the corn and the bread, all of this um, is actually going up a scale. So the higher you get on the scale, the quicker the absorption is. So as you can see, sports drink is at the top because that is a fuel that's going, that's a sugar. You can actually, you know, it's sugar. If you look at the ingredients on the list, sugar and water, and it goes quickly into your bloodstream and quickly to your muscles. So in a time when you don't need high amounts of energy coming in at once, you probably want to eat something that digests a little bit slower and is going to slow release your sugars. If you need something quickly, you may want the sports drink. Like let's say in the middle of a hockey game, when you know in five minutes you want that energy, then have the sports drink. So this is a, a little um, way of viewing how quick you're gonna get that energy. Then we have the muscle builders. So the category you want to understand fully as an athlete and how, what that's gonna do for you. So these are your things like yogurt, milk, eggs and cheese. It could be legumes, tofu, meats, and all the seafood like uh, shrimp and tuna and um, any of the fish. So all of those are going to be uh, high in protein, of course, and build you muscle. And then we have the superfoods. The superfoods, I created a category that includes both healthy fats like nuts and seeds and olives and avocados. And this is almond milk, if you will. And then um, also has all your vegetables. So the, like the rainbow of vegetables are here as well. Um, so you might be wondering what happened to the 10 mistakes hockey players are making because we only got to number three. So let's get to number two. Number two is getting mad at someone else when the pregame meal is not right. This uh, unfortunately is a mistake I see. And I'm not just saying like at your parents, let's say you're a hockey player, you get mad if the pregame meal is not exactly right. I'm talking also about restaurants. If you're out, like we, we as athletes need to take absolute responsibility for the food that's available for us. Because I can tell you, unless, and even at the professional level, I say, unless you're at the professional level, no, even at the professional level, like they are taking responsibility for themselves. Some of them have private chefs, yes, to help them out. 
but um, ultimately to get up there, to get to that level, they, ha they had to take care of themselves on the road. So if they relied solely on the team or solely on the coach for, for their nutrition, then chances are you could be left in a lurch sometimes. So what does that mean for you right now? I would just start simple, okay? Step one could be, be your own best friend here. Go in the list and decide, are there energizers? So remember what the energizers were, like pasta and rice and bread. Are there muscle builders, superfoods? And then I'm gonna separate out the superfood vegetables and the superfood fats, like the nuts and seeds and olives and avocado. So I would say separate all those four out and come up with three or four options that you like. And so I'm gonna give you an example so you could really see this. So here I have, you know, examples and visuals, like you know, I put tofu there as an option for a vegetarian meal, um, but you have muscle builders, you have superfoods, um, and then superfood fats. So as you can see, almond milk is not uh, high in fat. Maybe you didn't know that. So there it is uh, in the superfoods category, but not high in the nut side. And then you have peanuts and flax seeds and avocado as these superfood fats you could have, and then you have muscle builders. So when you put them together, what we want to be doing is we want to make meals out of them and meals can include you know herbs and vinegars and stuff and that's just little additions at the bottom i put like salt and cinnamon and basil it just depends on how you want to flavor your dish so here's what it looks like to make a balanced performance meal you you can start with these proportions on your plate now this might not be your exact need for your proportions but it's a good place to start you can balance out the three between superfoods muscle builders and energizers and sprinkle on the superfood fats so we could have like a potato energizer, um, avocado and asparagus superfoods and fish as our muscle builder. And we put it all together for our meal. Okay, however you want to cook it. So I love that Ryan shared with us that, you know, it didn't have to taste great all the time. He had all the nuts and bolts there. You know, you can become a five-star chef, but ultimately you want the ingredients uh, for functional, you know, performance. Then we could have something like fruit and oats. We could have the um, almond milk and peanuts as your superfood and superfood fat. And then you can have eggs as your muscle builder. And there you can put it together. Maybe you can even put the almond milk inside the oats and make like an oatmeal or an overnight oat, put the peanuts on top and you have a very interesting breakfast. One last example, classic pasta. We have, we can throw in some zucchini uh, and flaxseed in a sauce if we want, or I've seen some nice, um, recipes where we blend tofu with flaxseed and create some kind of like um, sauce or, or ball or something like that. And then anyways, you can have this uh, tofu muscle builder, so it's vegetarian now. You have flaxseed um, as your superfood fat, and then you have a zucchini as the vegetable and then your pasta. So it makes a complete meal there. All right, now step two is not just about the meal itself, the compositions, but it's about timing. So I'm gonna teach you about key moment number one. There are three other key moments to know in uh, performance eating, but key moment number one is really key for pregame. So we wanna, I wanna make sure you have the, the notions of what to do before a game. So first of all, you wanna learn about the timing of these muscle builders, superfoods, and superfood fats. So what I suggest is that in step two, you write down your game times and you count back from the game. So here I give you the example of 7 p.m., 5 p.m., and 1 p.m. <coughs> Excuse me. So we have, um, we go back from 7, 6, 5, 4, and 3. We go back from 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. So you see what we're doing? <clears throat> the one o'clock game, noon, 11, 10, and nine. So here we have three to four being an ideal time to have the pregame meal for a 7 p.m. game. One to two in the afternoon for a 5 p.m. game, nine to 10 in the morning for a 1 p.m. game. Now, I'll be curious, and maybe you can write in the comments, um, if anyone is actually uh, doing this three to four hours before your game for your pregame meal. Excuse my voice, I'm just losing it a little bit. So when you test out your, your meals, do you know if they're working for you? Have you been doing any, like I said in the beginning, um, failure analysis or critical analysis or success analysis, like really understanding, was this a successful meal that I had? So what you can be doing is looking at the results of that meal. 
like, have you been evaluating your energy? And you're, sometimes the people watching you, like your coach or your parents can help you with this. They could say, you look like you couldn't like make it down the ice by the end of the game. Maybe you felt like you had more energy than you actually looked. Um, but you could be getting help with energy assessment. Now you're the only one that will know if you're, um, if you have digestive upset, like bloating, this kind of thing. Um, physical pains like headaches and cramps, that's a poor result, right? Uh, mood, is it really good? Are you feeling great, focused? Um, or can you not focus or is your mood up and down? These are results. So if any of these results are good, you can look back at your meal and be like, okay, that contributed. If they were bad, then you can look back at your meal and say, is there something I can tweak? This is my favorite and it is number one. Here we are, drum roll. The number one mistake that hockey players are making is that they are not aware that eating takes practice too. Um, maybe this quote sounds familiar. Let's go shoot 500 pucks. Oh, and then go for McD's because we, you know, we need to eat after, after hockey practice. So if that's you, then there's definitely some work to be done. We can look at that and go, well, you may have just reduced your effectiveness of shooting those pucks, let's say by 50% if you didn't eat properly afterwards for recovery. So um, I'm just making up a number, but I want to hammer home a point. The recovery meal is an important piece. It's key moment number four in our four key moments to eat around sport. And you want to be going for uh, like looking at that practice in eating along with your practice in hockey. And if the two aren't lining up together, you're missing, you're missing out. Okay, so what can you do? And this is my step three. You can practice your meals. You can be practicing, um, I would say, you know, how many times do you wanna do hockey practice? Like hundreds of times, right? You wanna practice the breakout or shooting. If you only practice, let's say your pregame meal, at games, then you only get to do how many games in a season? Maybe 30 if you're lucky. So breakfast, lunch, and supper might become opportunities to practice your pregame meal. And it's the difference between taking, let's say, four years to get to 100 practices of your pregame meal than, or five weeks. So if you want to be practicing consistently what you want to be doing before a game, then you're going to get the results in the game a lot faster. Okay, so you could be the person that takes four years to get to an understanding about your pregame meal, or you could be the person that takes five weeks. But I know it's hard to think of 100, so start with a goal you can easily achieve, let's say in 40 days or in two weeks, and you can check off 10 pregame meals or 10 practices. So you could do, you know, one at breakfast, um, and then a couple days later, one at lunch, and then one at supper, and then just go through, and all of a sudden you've practiced 10 times. And remember about the awareness of results. This is just saying three to four hours after I had that meal, what were the results? Did I have a lot of energy? Did I have a mood shift? Did I still feel full? Was I bloated? Was I gassy? Like all of these symptoms you want to be looking at. All right, you made it. <laughs> your, your gift for showing up. Your mini course on the four steps to planning your pregame meal. So I'm gonna give you a link to get a how to plan your pregame meal mini course. And I would try to share this with your teammates because the more people eating well for your game, the better your whole team is gonna do. Uh, we're gonna give you three pregame meal recipes to try out and an evaluation grid for your pregame meal. Okay, those aren't up yet on the website. They will be up soon. Oh, and a fun little game. I like games. Um, okay, so prizes are fun for me and probably for you as well. So the first person to finish the, all the three videos in the course to do their full, like go through the, the videos, watch and comment about something in the video. So I know you actually watch the video, the three videos on how to plan your pregame meal. I will look for the first person to comment on all three. Um, and that person, I'll send you a free copy of Eat This for Performance in Hockey. That is the book that I have written that has like everything in it for what you should know for sports nutrition, as well as a few bonus stuff on supplements. So you definitely probably want that. 
All right, um, confident athletes. I hope that that is who you are now uh, when it comes to some of these sports nutrition concepts. This is just the beginning though. There is literally a whole course. Um, I've just put up on the website the uh, link to it on my website, um, Confident Athletes. And it is a taking you through that food list, taking you through the four key moments. So if you're interested in that, just reach out. Um, anyways, you need to practice to become champions. So practice is how we dominate. So I can't stress that enough. The number one thing that I see hockey players making as a mistake is they do not practice their sports nutrition like they would a hockey game or shooting pucks. So why did you show up today? I'm guessing you're ready to evolve your nutrition habits and avoid these top 10 mistakes. And let's start with your pregame meal. So if you want, here's the link. Um, so it's ET4P, eatthisforperformance.com slash pregame. Pretty easy to remember. Okay, um, I'm gonna head off and thank you all for your lovely attention. And I will, um, I'll be hopefully seeing uh, who's gonna win the book in a, in a little bit. And again, uh, see you around Facebook and beyond. And I will, um, yeah, I, it was just lovely to catch up with you all. All right, bye guys.